Well, one of the problems I suspect many listeners to the New Music Show have been anticipating all season is uh, the UK premiere of George Kurtag's opera Fin de Partie, End Game. Kurtag waited until he had turned 90 years old to even attempt writing an opera. Maybe it was his choice of text that made him wait so long he'd chosen to adapt Samuel Beckett's stupendously austere and absurd 1957 masterpiece End Game. Um, I suppose part of the problem is that Beckett insisted that his plays should never be put to music. Um, There's just so much music in the text itself. Beckett was notoriously meticulous about the exact intonation, the rhythm that actors should use when speaking his lines. Um, Then again, Kurtag himself is an artist with a forensic ear for detail, and he decided to give it a shot to set the text of Fin de Partie word for word in French. So that is happening at the proms on the 17th of August, live here on BBC Radio 3, of course, as all of the proms are. Um, Our beloved BBC Scottish Symphony Orchestra giving that British premiere. And I'm beyond honoured to say that tonight here on the New Music Show, I am joined by George Kurtag himself to discuss the opera. Um, He spoke to me via Zoom from a beautiful room in Budapest, lined with books and vinyl and an old gramophone player in the corner, and also one of the most stylish speaker systems that I've ever seen in the background. For today's programme, we started with your piece Kafka Fragments and it made me want to ask you about something that has been so essential to your work for so long, the idea of fragments and what can be contained within such a tiny gesture. Why are you so interested in concision, in intensity, in focus? I don't know, but that's why I, I like Kafka and why I like Beckett, that, that it's so precise and with the less words that's necessary. I seek in, in music the same. And therefore, for me, Beckett grow from the first moment so, so important. Do you remember the first time that you encountered Beckett's work? Yes. And what impact did it have on you when you first read his plays or saw his plays? I, I saw in, in Paris Endgame the fin de partie, and I understand very little from it. But after I bought the, the book, and Ligeti called me and, and told me if it's possible to see Waiting for Godot. And from this moment, Beckett was the, the most important. What was it about Beckett's work that made him the most important for you? I think this, the shortness of his sentences and this absolute precise formulation We have spoken about the words and the concision and the ability of Beckett to say so much with so little. For you, what is the message of the play? (laughs) That is, if I want to tell you the story, I cannot. Because for me, it's about the whole human life. Therefore, I wanted to have it in music. If someone is singing what I wrote, it must be the same value as if I heard it in prosa. So the key for your performers is that they must be completely faithful to what you have on the page and what Beckett has instructed in his words also. It's a tough job for a performer <laughs> to be so precise. Yes, Yes, but I was working with uh, Ryan uh, Big Wigglesworth. 
and I, I trust him very much. He will do the piece as I imagined it. He, he is a composer himself. He understands the music from the inside, yes. I think. What is the Kurtag language? That's that's what, what I cannot t tell in prose. <laughs> okay. I can only sing it. Ah, please do. Or or tell it in prose or musically. Yeah. So for instance, the beginning of Fan de Party is Fini. C'est fini. Ça va finir. Peut-être. Ça va peut-être finir. You understand? And if they have not, not these intervals between the little entries, then they are doing the heart of the thing. Is it the silence that is the heart of the thing? Yes, the silence is, is always. In French, Beckett is always, always writing. Un temps just to wait. Hmm. Listening to you talk about silence makes me think about how noisy the world is today. It's very rare to, to find silence and to find that kind of time. Do you find the world today very crowded? <laughs> what is troubling me is more if people is listening to what I do. If it's noise around me, that's that's absolutely not not troubling me. I have my own silence. Well, I can tell you that people are listening. Most certainly, you have a huge audience who find your music extremely important. And I can tell you that the fact that your opera is coming to the proms means a great deal to a great number of people. This is a huge event. Thank you. <laughs> Perhaps, I hope. Well, what an immense honour that was to speak to George Kurtag, the UK premiere of Kurtag's opera Fin de Partie, End Game. That is happening at the proms on the 17th of August, live here on BBC Radio 3, of course, as all of the proms are. Um, we're going to hear his double concerto now here on the New Music Show, Opus 27, number two. It was written in 1989. One of his pieces in which he explores sound in space, I suppose, the piano and the cello, centre stage, the rest of the instruments arranged in two groups across the hall. And the Opus 27 in the title is connected to Beethoven's Opus 27 Sonata, Beethoven being one of the titans in Kurtag's mind. This is a recent performance from a pianist who's worked very closely with Kurtag, Tamara Stefanovic, um, Jean-Guy Anquera, the cellist, and the RAI National Symphony Orchestra, conducted by Roberto. Trevino.
The Double Concerto by George Kurtag. That was the pianist Tamara Stefanovic. The cellist Jean Guillain-Kera and the RAI National Symphony Orchestra conducted by Roberto Trevino. Uh, piano and cello centre stage in dialogue with the other groups of instruments including all those uh, intricate percussion tam-tams and bongos. We played that and also spoke to Mr Kurtag in anticipation of Endgame, the opera coming to the BBC Proms on August the 17th. Well, this is BBC Radio 3, home of the proms, home of the new music show, which you are listening to with me, Kate Mollison.